Well, hello there. Welcome to the 12th episode of the Stratton Craft series. So in the previous episode, we were done with making this outside structure. But if you go in, it's empty. So we got to do that in today's episode. So let us quickly do that now, shall we? A few minutes later. Check it out guys, we are done with the interiors. So, as you remember from the previous episode, or you would remember from the previous episode if you watched it. If you haven't, watch now again. <laughs> so, this is actually a trading hall, right? So, we have these little cells where the villagers can sit in. And these tractors are there so that uh, the villagers can't escape when there's nothing in front of them. So, if we... So usually we would have the villagers like this. So we'd have workstations here. So they can't really get through. But we need a better trade. So we would keep breaking it and then replacing it and then breaking it again. So that time, let's say if the trapdoor were not here, the villager could just run away. So the fundamental thing here is the villagers are slightly taller than players. So they are not able to pass underneath this trap door, whereas the player can. That's the mechanic that we're using there. And if you're wondering why these small gaps over here with half slabs, that's because the villagers are then able to gossip with each, with each other. So let's imagine that there's a villager here and a villager here. If I were to trade with this villager here, he would then gossip so-called gossip to the other villager that oh this guy is good so give him a heavy discount and he might give me a heavy discount and vice versa too let's say i accidentally hit this villager so he'll get angry then he will spread the message that i'm bad and they all will increase their trades so we don't want that obviously but it happens sometimes it's happened to me quite a lot of times Moving on, uh, I really don't want to do this, so I shall get the face cam back. I have to get the villagers back, uh, villagers over here, not villagers back, there were never villagers over here. <laughs> oh, okay, this seems to have broken this, that's okay, quick fix. So we need to transport the villagers from the villager breeder over there across. You can see it there into this place. Now, not a really long distance, but I really don't want to work with villagers. I think you can make that out with my voice. <laughs> it's okay. Everything for the sake of this trading hall and for Stratencraft as well. So, I shall quickly get the villagers over here and then... Well, we'll see how we can cycle through their trades and maybe we might get ourselves a good one as well. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, who am I kidding? These are villagers. Nothing ever goes to plan. As you can see, guys, I have a villager over here. Now, if I remove the minecart carefully, you see, he can't come out, but I can go in. Yeah. So... Now what you do is you just take your workstation so it can be a lectern, it can be a composter if you want a farmer or I mean there are a lot more I'm forgetting. I mean if you want a blacksmith you can take a smithing table and yeah let's put it he should become a librarian and then well he has no good trades you can see there's no so what if, for a librarian, you are aiming to get enchanted books. See, punch two, I mean not punch two, also punch one. That's, that's pretty trash. So you, you just have to keep breaking it and putting it back down again and again. And yes, this is the most cumbersome process out of everything. Look at this curse of vanishing, no way. So you got to keep doing this until and unless you get the book that you desire. So, I mean, let's keep doing okay, This is not bad, but I don't want that. So, 
Let's get into a time lapse mode until we get the book, shall we? So guys, as you must have seen in the clip, we got a librarian with a decent trade, like feather falling, so it'll be pretty good for the boots. Only thing you must have noticed is that in between, I'm, well, I must have given him a punch in between. Okay, not the, I mean, I guess it was a friendly punch from my side, but he didn't take it in that way, so... Yes, he's increased his prices, which ideally it should have been 12, but it's 17 now. Paper trades also, it's 26 for one emerald. So, not the ideal situation, but it's still okay. So, this is what you got to keep doing. You got to keep, you know, breaking it and placing it, breaking it and placing it. But then, when you get the desired trade, like in my case, Feather Falling 3, you have to then lock it in. Now, how do you lock it in? You have to trade with the villager once. As you can see, I traded one, you know, I traded paper with him once. So let's do it again. I, you can, you know, either click on this or you can just put paper here automatically. And you got to take one emerald over here. That is what you do. Okay. And now his trades are locked in. So even if I were to remove this, you can see that the trades are still there. So then you must be wondering then why do I have to place this in front again? Well, it's so that he can restock. So he requires his workstation, i.e. this lectern to restock all his trades again. Otherwise we could just you know, keep trading to some point and then we'd never get any more emeralds and that then this villager is useless. So that is why make sure that you keep the workstation in front of him and in a place where they think that they can access it. So for example, in this way, they think they can access it and they can access it, but they can't come out because of this trap door. So this is what I'd recommend, you know, just having one small trap door when you're building your own villager trader holds as well now i want to get in a few more villagers this time i'm not going to be recording them because it's quite quite a boring process so i shall meet you guys in a bit check our assortment out so i think you people know who this one is so i shall introduce you to the other councils of the library members yeah, I've decided to call them library members. So apart from these guys, we have a few, you know, other kinds over here. Well, I'll show you all that trade. So I think you know the first one, like I'd mentioned before. Second, well, we have mending and feather falling. I'm not worried about the feather falling, but mending. Yes, I'll take it any day, any day. Then silk touch, another good one. So. Those of you who don't know or are new to trading and all that, mending is basically an OP enchantment. It's like end game level thing. So whenever you put it onto your tools, your tools heal, but you have to give XP. So I mean, if you as long as there's a continuous stream of XP, you can heal your tools up, and it's pretty good that way. And silk touch, well, if you apply silk touch to any tool you can then start for example if i were to put it on my shovel which i cannot find yeah if i were to put it on my shovel then if i were to go out and dig up a grass block that i would just get the grass block instead of dirt so that is silk touch for you and similarly if i were to put it on my pickaxe and mine stone i would get stone instead of cobblestone like we usually do so that's mending and silk touch in a nutshell then we have Aqua Affinity. Uh, Aqua Affinity is only useful for the helmet. So what, what it allows you to do is that basically allows you to mine at the same speed as you could 
on the surface but underwater and it also clears up your vision so it's not as foggy as before and in general it's, it's, it's a pretty good enchantment to have especially if you're dealing with um, the guardian temple and let's see last but not least we have unbreaking three unbreaking three well it basically extends the life of the tool so if we have unbreaking three it runs almost three times as much as it normally would then we have a farmer so these guys over here I mean, forget the farmer yeah these guys over here are my emerald generating you know villages so i you know i'm going to reserve two slots over here for librarians i need a few more enchantments that i think i will require and yeah we we'll leave, we'll leave it with that one there so these two these two slots for now are empty eventually they will be full so for the farmer we have well, so the farmer's expert level so i keep trading carrots and potatoes with him so eventually we'll start trading all this but as of now only carrots and potatoes with this toolsmith i trade a lot of iron but they don't ex accept a lot so it's not really that profitable same with this guy i trade a lot of iron with him but yeah it's, it's not that great i mean as compared to the farmer uh, so you can see we have a lot of emeralds right almost two we have two stacks exact so i got most of it from this guy over here so these two i'm not sure but in they're there it's okay might get rid of them don't tell it to them though might get rid of them let's whisper in the corner here yeah. might get rid of them so don't tell them yeah anyways well guys that's about it so that wraps up this episode so I'll give you guys some news for next for the next two weeks. There'll be no Stratencraft upload because of, well, you guessed it, examinations. So since my exams are going on, I'll not be able to upload anything because I have to study as well. And well, that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like, share and subscribe. And I shall see you guys in the next one. For now, goodbye.